Rutgers, Harvard, Yale, Army, Miami. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, reviewing college football history and relics from the past, schools that in a generation or five or ten gone by once were great, mighty powers of college football winning national championships. No more. They are now relics. Do we add Miami to that list as the first modern-day relic of college football? Please like, comment, share the videos, and subscribe if you love college football. We analyze it each and every day. Best discussion, debate, and analysis right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. All right, I bring you these facts about Miami football. But first, let's look at this particular season and then recent history. My prediction this season on Miami was 8-4, and four, and I've stated this many times when I made my projection that Miami would finish 8-4. First of all, a lot of people laughed at me and criticized me. Of course, Miami fans said I was out of my mind. How could I possibly find four losses for this football team? Number one, because they were just so talented. Number two, because they hired uh, a coach who would be a tremendous upgrade over Mark Richt. And number three, because their schedule was so soft. And I certainly agreed with the latter point. The schedule has been soft here in 2019 for Miami. They play in the worst conference of the Power Five, and they play in the worst division of the two in the ACC. Miami only played one team this season that I consider decidedly better than them. And it's not by a huge gap. It's not by a huge margin. Florida has slightly better talent and certainly a better team, a better program, a more disciplined and fundamentally sound team, a team that plays and knows how to win games. So Florida was the better team. They barely won that game against Miami. So that was the one game that I was fairly confident that Miami would lose. But I looked at the rest of the schedule and thought, who are they going to lose to? Well, Florida State has comparable talent, so that would be the other game that Miami might lose. But even if they lose to the two teams that they certainly could beat, they have the talent to beat those two teams, the Gators and the Knolls. I thought, who else are they going to lose to? But I just had general confidence that Miami would screw it up. And they've screwed it up beyond even my expectations. So in Predicting Miami to go 8-4, and four, I thought that they would lose to Florida and then lose three other games to some collection of Louisville, Virginia, Florida State, Pitt, somebody else, and they did. Georgia Tech 3-9, and nine. Virginia Tech who finished 8-4, and four. Florida International. Six and six in Conference USA. So this Miami team, despite having, based on the recruiting rankings, which do in mass mean a lot, has the most talented roster in the division by far. The current personnel on the roster was rated by the 247 composite to be the fourth best, the second best, the second best, and the third best in the ACC. Those four past recruiting classes, looking at 2019, 18, 17, 16, that comprised the current roster, were numbers 4, 2, 2, and 3 in the ACC. Numbers 27, 8, 12, and 22 in the country. The only two schools that come anywhere close to that in the Coastal Division would be Virginia Tech and North Carolina, whose classes have been ranked in the low 20s to mid 30s, something in that range between 25 and 40. And the rest of these teams that are beating Miami and winning Coastal Division championships like Virginia, like Pitt the last two years, have been recruiting in the 40s and 50s. So it's not even close in regards to massive talent on the Miami roster that's been screwed up and not prepared to win football games. Consider who Miami's lost to this year. They are not playing an SEC schedule or a Big Ten schedule. They just lost to Duke. They had a one-point lead in the fourth quarter. 
But in the final 10 minutes, they gave up two touchdowns and couldn't score, and they lost to a 4-7 and seven Duke team that had lost five consecutive games, and they lose that game 27-17. to 17. They trailed the week before FIU 23-3. And even though they closed the gap to 30-24, to 24, they had to score with 30 seconds left to make it a one-score game. They were down by two scores in the fourth quarter to FIU, a team that lost to FAU by 30, that lost to Middle Tennessee by 33, that lost to Tulane, Western Kentucky, and Old Dominion, 6-6 six and six in Conference USA. Of course, Miami lost to Georgia Tech, a team that is 3-9 and nine, that just got done losing to Georgia by 49 points. Georgia Tech, 3-9, and nine, rebuilding under Jeff Collins, completely overhauling the roster, the approach on offense, beat Miami. Virginia Tech, which had just lost to Duke 45-10, to 10, was able to beat Miami with a 28 spot in the first quarter, winning 42-35. And of course, North Carolina, a team that just finished at 6-6, six and six, another marginal team that Miami lost to. In just about all these games, if you would look at the yardage totals, the productions offensively and defensively for these teams against Miami versus what they were able to produce during the season, there is a substantial, substantial upgrade in what these teams were able to produce against the Canes versus the rest of their competition. For example, Miami could only gain 259 yards last week against Duke, who gives up 390 per game. That's just one example. It goes on down the list. And this has been going on for years and years and years. This is not necessarily just a Manny Diaz problem or just a Mark Richt problem or Al Golden problem or Randy Shannon problem. It's a, a problem with the leadership at the University of Miami. Consider that here we are in 2019 and this season is wiped out. They're going to go to a meaningless bowl game at 6-6. Six and six. So we're looking at 2020. And Miami won its last national championship in 2001. Well, it's difficult to win national championships. So we could name all sorts of tremendous programs out there that are not winning national championships. Wisconsin, Michigan State, others. So winning a national championship is very difficult. There's only a handful of schools that do it. But it has been since 2002 since they played in a national championship game and were really in contention for a national championship and we've got to go back to 2003. That was the last time Miami finished in the top 10 in the nation, which again is difficult to do. But this is Miami we're talking about. The school that won five national championships between 1983 and 01. Five national championships and consistently finished in the top five to 10 in the nation aside from their probation years and issues with the NCAA in the 1990s. All right. Coming off that national championship game loss to Ohio State, Miami the next three years was still good. In 2003, 4, and 5, they went 29-8. and eight. That was their last good run. They finished number 5, 11-17 and 17 in the AP final poll those three years, 5, 11, and 17. Since then, in the last 14 seasons, this is 14 seasons running, Miami has finished ranked, guess how many times in the last 14 years? Three times. Three times in 14 years. That's not an elite program. That's not even a very good program. And we will make our case in just a second. Miami in those 14 years, just finished ranked the three times, never in the top 10. The 2009 team finished 19th. The 2016 team finished 20th. And the 2017 team that won the first 10 games of the season then proved to be a paper champion, finished 13th. So ironically, Mark Richt, despised by much of Miami football fans, delivered two of those national rankings in only three seasons that he coached 
but he delivered two of the three over the past 14 years. Again, in 2016 and 17, finishing 20th and 13th. Miami, since 2006, has won 103 games and lost 76. That's very marginal, 103 and 76. Here's a list of schools which have won more games, and there's more out there. And, of course, I'm not going to Oklahoma and Georgia and Ohio State and Alabama and Clemson and LSU. Those are obvious. Didn't need to look those up. They've won 50 and 60 and 70 more games than Miami. But I was curious about some schools that are rather marginal football-playing schools. They're not dominant teams. They're mid-tier in their league, if that. All these schools, and I'm sure, again, many more, have won more games in the last 14 years since the season of 2006 than Miami in the last 14 years. Missouri, South Carolina, Iowa, Kansas State, TCU, 26 more wins TCU has than Miami. Stanford, of course, Utah, Wisconsin. Why did I even look up Wisconsin? They've won 37 more games than Miami during that time frame. Virginia Tech who's supposed to be a lower-class Coastal Division team to Miami, but has been the second most prominent program over the last 25 to 30 years in that division. And, of course, they both came from the Big East. Virginia Tech has won 22 more games in the last 14 seasons than Miami. Louisville's won more games. Georgia Tech has won one less game. One less game. Georgia Tech, one less game than Miami since 2006. I think the rankings over the last 14 years outline it even clearer. So Miami has not finished in the top 10 since 2003, 16 years ago. Miami has not finished in the top 10 in the final AP poll. Guess how many schools have finished in the top 10 since 2003? Actually, since 2004, because Miami finished in 03, so I went back to 04. Since 2004, 41 schools have finished, not ranked, in the top 10 in the country. 41 other schools, not Miami. Six of those from the ACC. Included in this list of schools that have finished ranked in the top 10 since the last time Miami did? How about Kansas? <laughs> the very bottom floor of Power 5 football. Kansas has finished in the top 10 since Miami. Cal, Houston, UCF, Baylor, Boston College. Cincinnati has finished in the top 10. Arkansas. Arkansas, current loser of 19 consecutive SEC games, has finished in the top 10 twice since the last time Miami finished in the top 10. How about Ole Miss, Georgia Tech, Washington State, Louisville? How about these schools? TCU, since the last time Miami finished in the top 10 in the nation, has finished in the top 10, what do you think, twice, three times? Four? How about six times? Boise State four times has finished in the top ten. South Carolina coming off a four and eight season currently. We think of South Carolina as being a mid tier SEC school. Missouri, Kentucky, South Carolina, Mississippi State. South Carolina has finished in the top ten three times since Miami did in 2003. Iowa, West Virginia, Virginia Tech, Louisville have finished in the top 10 multiple times since Miami last finished in the top 10 in the nation. And finally, Miami's chief competitors in the state of Florida. There are two chief rivals in the state of Florida, Florida State and Florida. Of course, they've both won national championships since Miami did 
last time in 2001. Florida winning in 06 and 08 under Urban Meyer. Florida State, of course, with Jimbo Fisher in 2014, 2013. All right, so two national championships for the Gators, one for the Knolls. Florida has finished in the top 10 five times since the last time Miami did, and Florida State has finished in the top 10 four times since Miami was able to accomplish that, and both teams uh, have won many more games than Miami. It's Florida 128 since 2006. Florida State 126, Miami 103. The question is not whether Miami's an elite program. They're not an elite program. That's not even debatable. It's how good of a program are they? They just lost to Georgia Tech 3 and 9, Duke 5 and 7 after beating Miami, Florida International and on and on and on and on. Any program can have a down season. Oklahoma de- had down seasons in the 1990s. Ohio State had down seasons in the uh, late 80s. USC has had its rough ride, 5-7 and seven in 2018, and we could go on and on. Charlie Strong's Texas teams, every program. Alabama went 3-8 and eight about 15 years ago. Yes, every program hits its downturn for a season, maybe two, maybe three years. Those elite blue bloods have hit bad stretches due to a number of factors, but they didn't stay there. They didn't stay there for long. Miami has been subpar marginal for 14 years. 14 years since they have been a national factor on the field. We can possibly argue swag, we can argue reputation, we can argue cool factor. I don't necessarily have any evidence that Miami draws extraordinary TV ratings by any stretch, that they're really that popular anymore. This is a football program that, as our friend Cam Underwood at State of the U has often stated, is a microwave dynasty. It heated up quickly in the early 1980s, culminated with a national championship in 1983, and five of them between 1983 and 01. That is winning a ton of games and a ton of huge games and winning the biggest of games in the postseason to be voted number one five times in the span of 18 or 19 years is significant, but that's 18 to 19 years in the history of college football. Before that, Miami was insignificant. And after a couple of decent seasons in which they were still roughly a top 10 to 15 program directly after their national championship game loss in 02, they have fallen off the cliff. They're not horrible. They're not Kansas. They're not Oregon State. They're not Rutgers. But who are they? Miami right now, and I might be being kind here, is Kansas State, is Illinois, is Missouri, Mississippi State, Cal, Arizona State, that's Miami. They're a top 40 to 50 program right now in the country. The facts, the results, back it up. Not for one year, not for two years, not for three years, but for 14 years, this is what Miami has been, and this is what they currently are. Your thoughts on Miami football, whether it's to back up my findings, my research, my analysis, or to challenge it, or to bring some light to the current situation and what needs to be done to bring Miami football back to prominence, first in the ACC and then nationally. 
This is what we do here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Discuss, debate, and analyze the game we all love. We bring Miami football to the table. And we ask you for your feedback and your comments right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.